Gameplay everyone, Genesis Rider here with episode number 7 of my gameplay review series, where I take your Halo 4 films that you submit to me via the first link in the description on that video, and I teach you how to become better in online matchmaking, or give you a few tips and pointers on how you can improve your already pretty solid game. In this case, it's the latter, with Armchair Meerkat submitting an Infinity Team Doubles gameplay on the map Abandon. He's playing with his teammate using a little bit of an odd loadout here. Let's check it out. VR Boltshot, Hard Light Shield, Dexterity, and Resistor. For those of you who are not aware, Resistor allows you to retain full mobility while receiving fire. So if you're receiving fire from a VR, your character is slowed a slight amount. But if you're using a Resistor, your character is not slowed at all. We'll go over your loadout a little bit more and I'll teach you a few ways you can use it more effectively. Now off the start here, Armchair, I'm going to be addressing you throughout this game. I hypothetically wanted to skip through some portions of the game, but seeing as how close it is and just how good of a film it was, this, I'm just resigning myself right now, this 12 minute and 18 second gameplay will be the longest gameplay review I've ever done so far. So just a warning to the, you, those of you viewers out there, if you're wanting a short video, you might want to check out the playlist of gameplay reviews I have created. Click on the annotation in the top right hand corner to go there now, or it's the second link in the description. I'll also be showing you how you can submit your own gameplay videos at the end of this video. So off the start here, Armchair Meerkat, you have the overshield spawning over here, obviously, and you have the sniper rifle spawning the back of top yellow. Now, I want to point out two things, and that is you and the enemy player don't take the route you should to the overshield. Now, you need to back up as soon as you spawn here, and this is going to sound a little bit odd. Why would you want to do that? Because you need to line up this run along this box to top overshield. You need to spawn back up, turn to your left, back up a little bit more, and sprint, go a dead sprint, jump, hit the corner of this box, continue sprinting, don't stop sprinting throughout this entire thing, and then jump as you reach the very edge of this box, almost as you're about to fall off, crouch jump up right here onto this portion of the ledge. Don't try to get over here, just crouch jump onto this portion of the ledge, and then you're going to have to repress your sprint button because you just crouched on top of this ledge. Repress your sprint button and sprint straight for that overshield. The enemy th team can do the same thing, but it's a little bit more difficult, and I think they have a little bit of a longer run to the overshield. They can uh, sort of walk forward here, turn, sprint jump off, and it's a little bit hard to make this jump. You have to make it crouch jump onto this rock, and then you got to jump to top middle for the overshield. You really want to practice both of these jumps in matchmaking, as it is your teammate sort of runs down this ramp here and um, sort of jumps up here and eventually does get the overshield, but you don't seem to understand exactly where you're going. So let's start and just analyze this beginning of the gameplay real slowly here. So as your teammate goes to the overshield, you throw two grenades at ring two. And both of these grenades do absolutely no damage, and there's no reason to even throw one of these grenades. Now, I'll move on to the offense of throwing two grenades in just a second, but the point of the matter is, if any of the enemy team from this position rushes ring two, they're probably not very experienced at the game. I'm not saying that rushing ring two is completely... Um, a not an option for strategy wise but you and the enemy team both sort of nade ring two and it's not worth it because the enemy team is going to either jump on this box and jump ring three to get a height advantage which is really advantageous on this um, on this side of the map or they're going to rush for the overshield or they're going to rush around um, through the magic tree side that has the lift through the magic tree and to the sniper rifle they would never rush ring two especially given that they can just jump ring three for that height advantage. So there's no reason to nade from your side whatsoever. Um, and as it is, you seem to do this double grenade thing a lot. And this is a very common problem. It's almost as common as um, panic scoping or reloading when you don't really need to. Um, yeah, we'll be counting the number of times you throw two grenades in the film and um, one of them doesn't do any damage or most likely n both of them don't do any damage and it is one of the main offenses you have throughout this gameplay. As it is here, if you know your teammate's going for overshield, don't fake towards it. You need to just, you don't even need to jump ring three. Just sprint straight from ring two over to this ramp and jump for the sniper rifle. The reason is, you have resistor, dude. If you, even if you get shot while running for the sniper rifle, okay, you can grab this pulse grenade, come over here, pulse grenade right here so he can't come around the corner and run for the sniper rifle and because you have the resistor, even if you get shot while in midair a few times, you're not going to be slowed down. In other words, if you're in a dead sprint and if you don't turn, if you maintain course, using your resistor, you can jump for the sniper rifle and still maintain 
your full mobility and not miss the jump, okay? And this is why it's confusing to me why you even debate here going top middle at all. This guy pushes all the way to Magic Tree, and I would like to have seen you stay more on target with this guy. As it is, you do have some pretty sick shots throughout this film, but you end up missing a shot you probably could have gotten here. Um, as it is, you do do a pretty good job of waiting for your teammate who has the overshield to push up after getting that one kill on enemy team player. He's going to push up and help you with this guy. But unfortunately, I don't think you, you're in your teammate with communicating very well. I'm going to switch over to your teammate here. He Look at his shield bar right now. He has a slight sliver of overshield left, but as you can see, by his appearance, it looks like he has a full overshield. You both switch to the bolt shot here, which is a problem, because you both end up completely missing. And I would like to point out that, um, if, especially if you have an overshield, your teammate didn't need to use the bolt shot. He needed to switch to the um, battle rifle. But we're focusing more on your gameplay. You need to just stay with your battle rifle here. There's no, there's no reason for you both to charge around the corner. You need to remain passive in this situation and wait for the enemy player to make a mistake. And because something like this, where the enemy player gets completely away, and he, your teammate ends up getting one shot, you miss your bolt shot, get blamed in the face, and your teammate goes around the corner and immediately gets cleaned up, um, that would have not necessarily happened as much. And you probably would have noticed that second player creeping up from behind you if you had just remained passive in that situation. Um, as it is, that was a really good job on the enemy player pulling off some clutch snipes there. Now, you don't want to pick up that um, light rifle you just passed over unless you have full control of ring 3, which you don't. Great job not picking that up. As it is, you do push over here, and you have some really, really confident shots, even though this guy gets the first shot on you. You punish him by doing some really good shots. And right here, I would have liked to have seen you not lift ring 3. If you had been watching your um, your radar, you would have noticed that this guy had dropped ring 1 and being chased by your teammate. And that guy obviously has the sniper. Um, you want to sit here and crouch and wait for him to come around the corner then jump out and bolt shot him as soon as he comes around the corner here as it is um, you don't end up doing that you end up jumping um, ring three um, your shields were on the recharge here so i believe you could have successfully pulled off that maneuver your teammate ends up dying here so what i would what i would immediately do is pull back to ring three wait for him to spawn somewhere um, on the bottom roots boxes area and charge back with you to ring three as it is um sort of wait here a little too much um, that first grenade wasn't that bad, but I want to teach you something right here about your hard light. Good, good maneuver on the hard light shield here. I'm not going to critique it on over amount, but you could have minorly improved it, okay? When these two grenades come in, okay, you do hard light shield, which is a good idea, but you can hard light shield even better than you're doing right now. Notice how you have an open field of vision on your right hand side and your left hand side where you could be grenaded. The hard light shield does extend a good portion along your feet, but you can still kind of be shot through there. You, I would like to would I would have liked to have seen you back into this 90 degree corner angle. Okay, this corner would have allowed you to not have to cover nearly your sides as much as it is. You see how open your sides are. If you had backed into this corner and then hard light shield, I highly doubt you would have been hit by these grenades, especially if you've been aiming a little bit more at the floor when these grenades um, exploded. That's just an advanced tip of the hard light shield to use um, walls and stuff to your advantage. You can also move wall hard lighting. So you could have moved, maybe moved into the wall. Great job nading that player, and then your teammate gets, ends up getting him one shot, and the enemy player drops, uh, and he's gonna run ring three here. And good job switching targets to the second player. But what's unfortunate is that you don't end up watching your radar here. And it's probably because you're firing at the second player. But once this player drops like this, you needed to check your radar. Okay, because you would have been able to see that this player comes charging back straight at you. And um, this player is likely using shielding. I'm just saying that doing to the way his shields recharge so quickly um, after being one shot. Um, and you end up doing some great shots on this player. But I feel like your teammate could have gone after this this other player that you, you did. And you could have diverted your attention to this second guy. But that's just, that's just advanced tips and tricks here. As you are bottom yellow right now, I would have definitely lifted here. As soon as you saw this guy drop, I would have definitely lifted. I would not have tried to bolt shot him at all. But your teammate does end up cleaning up that kill. Now, continuing off the commentary here, you have some absolutely sick shots in this player in Purple Forest. Part of me wonders if this is because you're using a resistor and maybe you can strafe a little bit faster than they uh, can see you. Excellent maneuver on this player, recognizing that he was ring two and pushing ring three and not just waiting for you as you come up the lift. You bolt shot him um, very well. Part of the two times you do actually use the bolt shot effectively. 
Um, again, you throw two grenades um, off in the purple forest that do no damage at all. And what's unfortunate is that you actually give away your position to this player who is behind you in purple forest. And he actually ends up shooting you in the back in the following battle. You needed to instead use these grenades right here and bounce them off right here. And I want to point out something. When you are moving forward, and in other words, when you are walking forward, your grenades have slightly more momentum behind them, and they will go a little bit farther. So if you're walking forward and you throw a grenade right here, it will bounce a little bit farther before exploding than it would if you were necessarily backing up or if you were um, just standing still. It gives a, the grenade a little bit more momentum, and you can like bounce it on this floor right here, now bounce straight to this player's face, but unfortunately you already threw both your nades. You end up being shot from behind a little bit and from in front, and you get absolutely melted by both enemy players. Spawning near Magic Tree, you quickly look top middle, which is probably a wise idea. Unfortunately your teammate gets taken out here, and you throw again two grenades that do absolutely nothing to the enemy team. And this is quite puzzling um, on my part, the way you engage this player. Um, you see him, and you get some really solid shots off on him, and he misses a, a majority of his shots at the very end there. And you fake out behind this tree, which is a good idea. You should fake out a little bit behind the tree, but keep yourself zoomed. And then wait for him to actually throw the grenade, and then pop back out and shoot him in the head as he's throwing the grenade. Because it prevents him from, while well, he's throwing the grenade, the animation prevents him from firing. Instead, you back up around the tree and reload, and while you do have dexterity, and that's pretty fast, after you get one shot, you challenge. And this is really a bad idea. Number one, I'm not sure why you didn't use the hard light shield there. And number two, I don't know why in the world you challenge a person who has about the round as equal shields of you after you've lost all of your shields from a grenade he threw. Um, just play that a little bit more carefully next time. Play that a little bit more smart. Uh, second good bolt shot use here. Unfortunately, it does go to waste as both players um, do clean you up. Your teammate cleans up that guy top mid. And um, right here, you do want it to either go up those boxes or on top yellow, jump across the top middle, try to help out your team. Throwing two grenades again that do absolutely nothing to the enemy players. Um, you could have instead jumped right here and then thrown a grenade right here, okay? And it would have bounced straight into this guy's face. You want to be watching your radar and only f throwing grenades at people on your radar or who you can directly see, not across the map at people you think might be there. Um, as it is, you end up being very, very well out BR by this enemy player top middle. And your teammate does a pretty good job of staying alive here, but it's unfortunate that um, you don't seem to recognize that the scatter shot spawns over here where this you know obvious pulsing yellow light is. Um, it doesn't spawn on your HUD. In other words, it just it's unlike the overshield and the sniper. It doesn't spawn your HUD. And if you had gone for that, you would have re you would have um, sort of been over in this area already and been going back, and you would have been in a position to go up this ramp and possibly get the overshield. As it is, it's very puzzling the way you approach this. You automatically give up on this overshield, and it's really strange to me. You throw once again two grenades that do absolutely nothing to the enemy team. You, you throw two grenades here, and then you you basically give up on the overshield. Now, I think the guy would have gotten it, regardless of what you would have done, but I think if you would have not paused, and if as soon as the overshield came up, if you had known as soon as the overshield came up, and you hadn't walked on there for a few more seconds, if you had just turned, sprinted through here, gone straight up here, and jumped, you might have been able to make it before he got the overshield, but that's just a possibility. I'm not sure if that would actually happen. Um, we'll never know, really. Um, as it is, you use the hard light shield um, pretty effectively here as you drop. This is a really good flanking maneuver. Unfortunately, he recognizes. Use the hard light shield really well, and you back down. But once again, you don't use the hard light shield enough here. You're going to get taken out long before you can get off this bolt shot blast. And even if you got off the bolt shot blast, I highly doubt it would kill anybody. Um, you wanted to use your hard light shield there just to frustrate the enemy team that much longer. Your teammate was above you right here, and could have been able to help you and possibly kill one of these players while they were focused on you. Um, so moving on to the film commentary here, um, the sniper rifle does spawn top yellow. You lift and grab it straight off, um, and he, your teammate dies. We're putting some shots top middle. I'm not sure why you're not pulling out the sniper rifle by this point. Um, you needed to, you needed to um, snipe that guy in the body 
Um, when, his, when he has an overshield, there's no point sniping him in the head because it doesn't do any extra damage. You just want to snipe him in the body to lower all of his overshield. You want to keep them at bay. And this is what you end up kind of doing here. You recognize this guy's going to jump up top. Very good premonition on this part. Unfortunately, your second shot goes right between his legs. Um, that's what she said. And then um, you grab the... Well, actually, you don't end up grabbing... Oh, wow. That's a crazy explosion. You don't end up grabbing the pulse grenades here because he railguns you back, which is understandable. Great job on the enemy team's part. But once again, you use the hard light shield a little bit, and then you immediately drop it again. And this is where I really want to go into detail on why you... And it, oh, by the way, good grenades here. What you just threw were some pretty pretty decent grenades. Um, I don't think they ended up hitting anyone. If we can just zoom back here. You know, throwing two grenades, and no, neither of them hit anybody. But those are more like the grenades you should be throwing. However, you only needed to throw one of them. Um, you only want to throw one grenade. See if you get hit markers off that grenade. Hit markers are those little dots or lines that appear around your reticle when you've hit someone, whether it's with your bullets or with your grenades. Wait till you get hit markers with your first grenade, and if you do, maybe then throw your second grenade at the exact same place. Don't ever throw two grenades in the exact same place. I'll just be repeating that throughout the film. But anyway, moving on with this, you hard light shield here, and then drop your hard light shield. And then you get grenaded from across the map, which is really, really unfortunate here. He gets perfect grenade off this wall. I wanted to point out something, and this is, this is just my own personal opinion. You're using resistor, and while that is mildly useful, it is far more useful to use shielding with your hard light shield. Here's what I mean by that. So you get one shot here, and then you pull up your hard light, okay? There's a lot of people who don't realize or understand how the hard light shield affects the recharge of your actual um, shield bar at the top center of the screen, okay? Here's what it does, okay? When you pull up your hard light shield, the hard light shield prevents your shields from beginning to recharge, okay? In other words, it doesn't allow your shields to start recharging, but it does allow the four second time period that you normally have to wait for your shields to begin recharging after not taking damage for a certain period of time. It does not prevent that timer from counting down. So let's say you pull up your heart, you, you get one shot just like this. You pull up your hard light shield and then boom, you wait four seconds having your hard light shield up and then you take down your shield and your actual Spartan shield will begin immediately to recharge because you waited four seconds and then you pull down the Harlot Shield and your shield will immediately start to recharge. That's why you should be using shielding because once your shields start recharging, they will recharge one second faster than normal. So you can hold up your hard light shield for the entirety of, of this, this pause that you have to wait for your shields to start generating, take down your sh hard light shield exactly four seconds later and boom, your shield will come back one second faster than they would because you're using shielding. As it is, you're not using shielding, and unfortunately, you're just really, you you aren't using the hard light shield to the extent that you could. Um, I personally wouldn't use the hard light shield, but I'm just sort of going with it because that's what your loadout is in this gameplay. All right here, you're doing a pretty good flank with your team, but unfortunately you end up throwing, again, two grenades that do absolutely nothing to the enemy team. Um, and right here, your teammate is going to try to is going to um, kill this guy with the bolt shot. He tries to jump down on him. And right here, it's really important that you sort of make this jump over here and then jump up on this box and get over here. But unfortunately, you sort of drop down. And what's what's um, mildly puzzling about this is you're not getting top middle to help your teammate. You are once again throw two grenades that do absolutely nothing to the enemy team. And you're sort of hanging around magic tree. Now I realize you're waiting for your teammate to respawn, but you need to get sort of over in this area. The area you're in is is kind of easily nated. Someone can lift up to you and things of that nature. It's safer than some areas, but you need to try to get top yellow. And I love your shots here. I, I'm puzzled why you didn't do that earlier in the film um, when you encountered a very, very similar angle from this enemy player and he actually took you out. Um, this player ends up nading you and you punish him absolutely with some very confident shots. You have no shields here, and you just confidently um, kill that player. Very, very good shots on your part there. That's what I'd like to see more of, is just confidence in, in your map movement, as well as the confidence in your shot that we just saw there. Um, I think that would be a powerful combination. 
enemy player drops sniper right there. Really good job by your teammate. And I'd like to point out, this is a good maneuver on your part. When you when you pull out the bolt shot here, because you see that the sniper rifle is on the ground. So you pull out the bolt shot, not realizing that there's an enemy player here. And instead of trying to switch to your BR, you continue to shoot your normal rounds of bolt shot into this player. This is a smart idea because you already have the weapon out and your teammate is already engaging. You want to double team the enemy player so that the enemy player doesn't shoot um, your teammate and possibly kill him because your teammate might already be weak from taking out that first player. Now right here, I would call down the saw definitely for your secondary right here because you have a lull in the battle hill. You just killed two enemy players. I would call your saw down right here and then immediately move to ring three. As it is, I think it's you got a pretty good angle here, um, and you're sort of waiting for them to come to you. Uh, I'd like to point out uh, a few things here. The enemy player throws grenades top middle, so they obviously don't know where you are, but you whip scope, and this is this is a very very slight thing. It's not it's not a huge big deal, and you do jump, which gives you a slight advantage angle. But you whip your scope, and unfortunately, um, that's not what you need to be doing here. You just needed to zoom, jump, and or and sort of jump over. It's basically, basically, um, be like this, and then j then jump over to the right as he's coming up, and just j jump straight into his head. You don't need to jump straight up in the air and then move your aimer. You always want to be trying to put in as much movement into your sniper aiming as possible, because that's a more steady, consistent shot than trying to whip your scope around. Um, Halo 4 is much easier to whip scope than all the previous Halo games, but this... Um, Time, timeless strategy does still hold true. And unfortunately, this player does flank your teammate from top mid, which is a good eye, good play on his part, but you end up um, panic scoping here. And this is really, um, it really doesn't work out for you because you panic scope here and then you completely miss the melee, which the enemy player also misses, but then you're cleaned up by his teammate who also pushes top center. Really good job on the enemy team player's part there. Moving on with the commentary, you can call on your saw finally, which is a really good idea. Um, want to be pushing up to try to help your team teammate here. And jumping uh, top middle right now would be a really good idea, and they, there you do so. Very good job. Now you have control of top center. You're forcing the enemy players to come to you. They're both bottom center. You're in a very advantageous position here. Sort of hanging around. You're sort of waiting and um, baiting them. Now... I like your play here, but it's a little strange, okay? Because you back all the way up here. If your teammate were to die here, you wouldn't be able to take out anyone he had one shot. I would definitely go ring two and then push the purple force from there. I think what you're trying to do is remove yourself from the enemy player's radar, get out just out of range of their radar, and move to the left. Mainly because you're not being pushed by players. And overall, I like this play. I'm going to fast forward a little bit, though, and as we move over here, and finally, you see the sniper guy on Purple Ridge. This is Purple Ridge because you have the Purple Forest behind you and then down from it is the ridge line where this sort of root tree grows up um, into the wall here. And this player is obviously going to have Sniper because this is a, great, a very good Sniper position, kind of hard to grenade overall. And your, your plays here are really, really solid. There's not a whole lot I can comment on, so I'll be, I'll be um, saying right here, this um, enemy Sniper is going to be watching over shield and I'd like to point out how your teammate instead of trying to attack this guy top center, um, gives up his position and rush for the overshield, I think he may have been able to call out that this guy had sniper down here, um, and he would wouldn't your teammate would have been would not have been sniped, but your teammate should have been shooting top center. Anyway, moving back to your gameplay, um, your teammate does get taken out by the sniper, and so you immediately take advantage of that distraction by moving in, and you punish this player even though he gets the first shot on you, and uh, this enemy player is going to try to grenade you, and um, he also does the double grenade thing, I believe. And this player has the overshield. Now, I, guys, for those of you who don't know how to use a saw or are not familiar with a saw, I want you to watch how um, Armchair Meerkat does not hold down the trigger and spam the trigger, is what it's called, by holding it down. He pulses the trigger to retain accuracy as this player uh, sort of jetpacks up here. I want you to notice just how accurate his bullets are, and this is when you double grenade, okay? This is the exact time you do want to double grenade. This is not going to count as a faulty double grenade, because this is exactly the time you want to. You're throwing grenades perfectly right here, because you're one shot. You're backing around a corner, and you know this guy's on your radar going to be pushing up. He just used most of his jetpack, so we'd have to 
let that recharge if he was going to push you from the right with his jetpack. So instead, you throw two grenades to your left to make sure that if he charges that way, he'll get punished. And that's exactly what you should be doing. Double grenading is mainly useful or almost, almost only legitimate to use if you are behind cover weak running from someone who is charging you like this. Do a great job weakening this player and then taking him out. His overshield is completely nullified by this point. Enemy player double grenades you, doesn't get anywhere. And um, I love how you just stay really passive back here. And you end up popping off some really clutch shots on these guys, making them weak so that your teammate can get a pulse grenade kill on one of them. You end up nailing this guy across the map again in the back, preventing his shields from re recharging, and that enables your teammate to charge up with you so you can get control of ring three. However, you drop, um, unfortunately enough, you drop because you I, I believe you think they're bottom. Um, this did not need to occur. I think you feel like you could have cleaned them up with the saw, but you're giving up the ring three position, which is far more crucial. And overall, um, this play of sort of hanging around this general area is not is not a good idea. I would have immediately backed up, run over here, jumped on this box, like jump up here, and then jumped on this box, and then jumped ring three to try to take them out. The saw is mainly useful around that area. As you can see, they dropped the sniper rifle um, ring three. Um, but unfortunately, you end up just sort of staying around here. And I think this is kind of your mentality, your passive mentality play over here, coming into play over here. You're just trying to get them to charge you. But what you're not realizing is that they have a height advantage. I want you to notice how most of your shots are not even registering on this player because they're sort of hitting this ramp area right here. It's, it's just a bad situation as you end up being one shot, running through this, and you do end up surviving here, which is good. But your teammate is now alone and sort of trying to uh, regain control ring three. Now I'd like to point this out. You um, are uncrouching before you hit the top of these surfaces. And I know this takes a little bit of practice, but I would not have missed these jumps on the boxes. Um, maybe if I, especially not twice in a row. Um, you do really want to be careful when you're doing that. Make sure that when you're crouching, um, make sure that when you're crouching up these boxes, you are fine at the first one when you're jumping make sure you crouch and hold it down completely and move completely in the direction of the box um you, you end up kind of failing there uh, i guess your momentum is not in the direction it needs to be but notice how you do retain your crouch there and allows you to stay on top of that box even though you weren't completely moving and a whole lot of momentum towards the box you're still able to get on top of it because you held down crouch for just a half a second longer there jumping the ring three you get a really good flank on this guy who pushed out towards Purple Forest. Um, really good job on your part. He doesn't even get, end up getting any shots off on you here. Um, good job coming around and just pulsing shots on this guy. He almost sort of fakes you out here um, as he did earlier on Top Yellow. No need to sh put shots into the enemy player's body like that. I know your teammate was also hitting them or something. Maybe you're just fired up. I really don't even know. Um, throw a punch to the body instead. Don't ever use your ammo into their body. That's just, it, it puts you at a disadvantage. You never want to do something to the enemy body that puts you at a major disadvantage, like staying on it and teabagging it for a long period of time or anything like that. And even then, getting a saw kill is not impressive. If you had ninja'd him around the map while he was trying to ninja you, or if you had no-scoped him while he was in midair or something like that, maybe then, but not not on something as, as very uh, normal as a saw kill top middle on abandoned. That's, that's very, very average, and there's absolutely no need to waste ammo um, pumping that into an enemy player's body. As it is, you are in. You are able to end to get uh, two kills very well here. I was going to say on the first time I watched this film that you should have charged ring three and then maybe um, you know got over here and then got on top here. But it's really nice because you the enemy player sees his teammate die, um, sort of ring three over here, and he pushes ring two very rashly, and you're able to clean him up. And that's a really good play on your part. I really like what you did there. Now moving over to you to uh, Magic Tree, you're, you're going to try to flank this player, which is a really good idea. But what's puzzling to me here is that this player knows where you are, and they've just wasted a grenade on you, okay? The likelihood of a second grenade coming is very, very high, especially because of this slanted wall. He could throw a grenade right at the slanted wall, and it would sort of bounce over here. You need to charge this player now, and even though you don't, you end up not even using your hard light shield. And I want to point out something. You are two people against one guy right now, okay? 
So it is crucial that you get in there and try to get this kill. Otherwise, the enemy player is going to respawn and come and attack you. You're 2v1 right now. You need to push in and take out this player. This first grenade blows up, doesn't kill you, but you end up not using the hard light shield on this. I would have turned and used the hard light shield, pulled it up, let your let it fully um, uh, implode on your shield, and then charge him with your battle rifle out. I wouldn't try using this last of your saw ammo. Um, and he has a saw himself, which I, I don't even think I would have seen that coming. And your teammate um, ends up running ring one again, staying alive. Very good job on his part, um, escaping from that situation. Um, you get a guy charging you, ring through with a saw, put some solid shots on him, back up with your hard light shield, pull it out. He lifts uh, ring three, I believe, at some point. Actually, he's ring one behind you, and you do an excellent job of turning around and, and changing targets. I want you guys to watch. This is watching your radar right here. He notices this guy behind him, um, drops down, misses the bolt shot, turns around, and ends up putting team shots. His teammate helps him out from ring three, drops ring two, and he tries to charge the bolt shot, but his teammate uses the distraction to take out the guy with the saw. That was a very good work on his part, really working together with his teammate. Now they're only two kills down with two minutes and 30 seconds left, but unfortunately, um, this choke uh, really put them in a bind at this point. I was almost 99% positive they were going to lose the game because of this choke right here. Um, it, right here, it is very still possible, even though you don't have the complete lined up sprint sprint with the box, it is still very possible to jump on top of this box, pause a second, line yourself up, and sprint jump up, up, up here to get the overshield faster. Um, thankfully, you are not facing the person who has a jet pack. He is using, as you can see on his back right here, he's using the thruster pack. So you could have easily gotten this overshield before he did. And I want to point out something. Right here, you know that the enemy player is going to get the overshield, okay? There is little to no chance that you're going to be able to fire a, a lethal headshot from a low position like this. Every single shot you fire here is completely wasted. Because now he's going to regain full shield. None of the damage you did to him is going to matter. And he's going to have in, about two or three seconds of invincibility. You needed to have, before you even fired those two or three last shots, you needed to sprint over here and lift ring three immediately so that, uh, so that you make him push you on this ledge and you grenade the living crud out of him. Throw a grenade right here, back up behind the lift, and then throw another grenade right here as he charges you on your radar. You want to be dead watching your radar very closely here. As it is, this player just, is just going to turn around. I think you're trying to pull off some sort of ninja here or something that wasn't a really good setup for a ninja. But your teammate charges in with a damage boost, getting a clutch kill on the overshield carrier, drops the saw um, below the overshield ramp, and you go straight for it, which is probably a good idea, but you throw two grenades that are absolutely useless once again, and you go for the saw. This is kind of puzzling to me. I would have lifted ring three here because the, the sniper is up on your HUD. As you can see, hopefully you guys can see over there. And your teammate died with the saw. Your teammate is obviously going to come back for that. Um, as you can see, your teammate right behind you on your radar. Um, your teammate is going to come back for that because he died with it. He knows exactly where it is, whereas you, you might not, not know exactly where it is. Um, and you eventually pick it up here. But I would have gone for this sniper rifle here for sure. I don't know if that was just the communication with their teammate. Um, you do a pretty decent job of backing down here and just staying alive. I like how you guys don't end up pushing really hardcore here and really just waiting, waiting this game out. Now, I would like to point out something here, and this is kind of unfair, I realize, for me to put, point this out, but you can see, um, kind of through this little barrier, you can kind of see Ring 3, and that's probably where this guy glimpsed you from, or maybe even on his radar, but you can peek out with your hard light shield. Not only that, but the hard light shield gives you a little bit of third-person advantage, so you don't necessarily even have to peek all the way out. You can hard light, pull yourself into third person, and I want you to notice how the hard light shield sort of centers your your uh, your um, aimer or sort of your your screen kind of behind you and a little bit above your right shoulder, and you can sort of peek out using that, like sort of peek out while not allowing your full body to come into view. And even if your body does come into view, you have a hard light shield in front of you. Unfortunately, this player ended up just, just absolutely annihilating you in Purple Forest, and um, I don't think I would have even known to do that. But that's just a suggestion. Once again here, I would have definitely gone for the scatter shot, which is still sitting over here. Just keep that in mind uh, for future game plays on Abandoned. You're doing a great job of pushing Ring 3 immediately to try to regain this top control. Uh, you throw two grenades that don't do anything again. And this is just really unfortunate. 
You do end up using the hard light shield. I would have liked to see that hard light shield come up a little bit earlier when you jumped up there because you still could have been blamed. But as it is, um, right here, what I would have done, because this uh, player, as you can see on your radar, has dropped to sort of ring one on the map, and because um, from this position he can't easily get to ring three, there's not a box over here that he could ju easily jump to the ring three and flank your opponent. What I would have done is I would have backed up here and charged, sprint jumped over to, to Magic Tree and j j ran all the way over here and tried to flank him from the side as your teammate just held his, his attention top mid. Um, as it is, you sort of both hang around and you get some kind of clutch shots on him across the map here. But this guy knows you're going to pop out. He body shots you as you drop. You get some more clutch shots on him, but you're not going to be able to lift, up, lift that up and take this player out because you put yourself in a weaker position. If you had been um, over here, you would have been a more able to flank this player. And it, unfortunately, um, this is, again, passive style of gameplay coming into play. I think that you need to recognize that you have the power, even while you have no shields, to do something about your current position. Right here, it would have been to run over here and jump up this lift to flank the enemy player. Your teammate is pushing across from the Purple Forest Cave. Um, he, there he's going to be pushing um, this guy who's top yellow, and you need to lift up. This guy even pauses over here, and I want you to watch on your radar as he ends up escaping before you lift. If you had lifted up half a second earlier, and even if you had lifted up now, some of these grenades wouldn't have even hit you. Your teammate, once again, doing most of the work, um, taking out these players. He does have a saw, and that's, that's going to be um, quite obvious that he would get most of the kills at this point. But now, finally, you end up doing a great flanking maneuver, weakening him for your teammate so that he can get the kill. And you pick up the sniper, and this is really where you go ham in the last 26 seconds here. Um, you and your teammate sort of setting up on this um, tr gray cave tree line area. Great snipe across the map on a sprinting player. Not even sure why you didn't get um, that uh, headshot medal there. The name of the medal is escaping me at this moment. And you do a great sniper shot under pressure. Unfortunate why you don't hard light shield here. And that's actually what you said in your YouTube comment to me in the video. You said, why did not hard light shield there? I don't even know. But you have um, only a few seconds left in the film. And boom, the film ends. And Wonder of Wonders, you make the jump finally to the overshield, recognizing that you actually can make that jump. So, got, so um, before you um, click out of the video, I do want to go over a few things with you to round out the end of this film. Um, thank you for watching, guys. The rest of the tips in this film that I'll be going over at the end here are mainly for Armchair Meerkat and reviewing a few sections of his game, his gameplay back to back, showing him a few extra tips and coherently summarizing a few things. If you want to submit your own gameplay to me, please click on the annotation right now that's in the top right hand corner that will take you to a video that will describe how you submit your gameplays to me. Please watch that entire video. The video can also be found as I believe it's going to be the third link in the description, um, and it will take you also to that same video, and you can submit your gameplays to me there after watching the entire video. Um, now let's move into the summary portion of the gameplay for Armchair, Armchair Meerkat here. I'm getting really tongue tied over that. So Armchair Meerkat, this is a long video, so I want to summarize a few thoughts at the end here, just things that you need to work on and improve on in general. Um, I'd say the first overall thing, you need to really go into a custom game and work on those jumps to overshield that I mentioned. Don't don't practice in the middle of a game. Go actually into a custom game and try it out. Unfortunately, you'll need to download the latest map of Abandon from matchmaking from your temporary history. Don't load the map straight off your local files because the boxes will not be in the correct place to make that jump from the side that you spawned on as red team. The second thing you need to work on is your double grenade throwing. You really do not want a double grenade except for that one instance that I did show you. Um, you ended up doing so a total of nine times. This is a total of 18 grenades thrown that did basically nothing to the enemy team and was not helpful at all. I'm not expecting every grenade to be on par, but this is an obscene amount of grenades thrown that didn't reach their mark or even get close. Um, this is not even counting the grenades you threw in single fashion that didn't even hit their mark either. I think you only threw like two, maybe even three grenades that even remotely hit someone. Um, so just really work on that. Train yourself not to throw two grenades at once and you'll find other ways to throw a single grenade that you didn't know you could. Um, that, that will naturally happen as long as you aren't using both your grenades at the same time. Uh, flanking, you just need to be more aware and more aggressive. Um, if your teammate's pushing on a certain angle, try to get on a side angle. You did this several times during the gameplay 
but sometimes you remain very passive, and I'd like you to I'd like to see you using your really on par shot more in that way. And the last and final thing that I really want to point out is your use of the resistor um, in your loadout. I would definitely use shielding instead, especially if you continue to use a hard light shield in doubles, as I described in the film. It really, really complements that loadout very well, and that is a high recommendation. Even if you aren't using the hard light, I'd recommend using shielding over resistor. It's just far more useful. Resistor is more for objective game types where you don't want to be slowed down while carrying an objective. So that's it for this film. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.